Don't Feed the Pop Monster is the latest album from Broods, who joins us here in San Francisco. I'm wearing my own merch because I'm a nerd. Thank you for wearing it, so this way I Excuse didn't screw it up. Brother. That's um, just my makeup brush <laughs> all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Georgia and Caleb, great to see you guys again. Yeah, great to thanks see for you coming too. to our dressing room. <laughs> it's very luxurious. Yeah, I mean, like, this is a giant cushion that I'm really enjoying. <laughs> yeah, it, it's part of your rider. Giant cushions. Giant cushions. <laughs> I mean, sofas. maybe it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, I, I guess your rider's become increasingly more luxurious, right? It's stayed exactly the I same. I feel like I think. <laughs> it's only altered ever so slightly, like, from... It's vodka to tequila. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> that's we don't we don't have very many demands in our green room. No, you know we don't need much. This is the first show of the tour that's sold out, so thank you, San Francisco. Obviously, a lot of people have been really excited for you guys. And, yeah. And I, you know, we were just chatting earlier about how this is kind of apropos because when we first spoke, you guys were just really on the upswing after Bridges had come out yeah. and, and you know the whole SoundCloud thing and getting signed and and yeah. now with this album it's kind now of now we've been dropped like multiple times <laughs> and, and re-picked up multiple times and you guys are grizzly veterans a few, more, a few albums out it's been a real roller coaster. <laughs> yeah yeah but this is a, a re- rebirth you're like the yeah. phoenix rising again it feels a bit like that you know and and I mean Every time we've released an album, it's been a completely different experience, partly because, you know, every album's been like on a different combination of labels or whatever. But um, this one, we wrote this whole album while we were independent. Yeah, we didn't have anyone telling us what we couldn't do, what we should be doing. So it was very much just working off the opinions of the two of us. Yeah, and close friends. (laughs) And close friends that we showed. (laughs) But... It was nice to have that experience and to make something that was, and that is and, and felt like 100% us. But this one we had a little bit more time too, you know, like we, we spent like two, almost two and a half years I think on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we traveled a lot when we wrote it. We wrote in Sweden and Nicaragua and um, New Zealand and LA and Nashville. Um, so San Fran. San Fran. Okay. <laughs> Where we wrote yeah. a lot in the... Like near the mission. Yeah. Um, and you didn't grab any burritos? We probably did, for sure. <laughs> I feel like... We were here for weeks and weeks. Yeah. So. <laughs> we ate a lot of good food here, actually. I'm sure you did. The guy that we were yeah. working with was a, a real foodie. So we were riding with Dan, the automator, and he, he is... He loves food. He loves food. <laughs> so he took us to a lot of different restaurants, and it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, we were spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I understand the Nicaraguan trip was very, very influential, but I, let, very. let's talk about San Francisco real quick. <laughs> Dan, the automator, is an amazing uh, yeah, producer awesome. and, and, and a collaborator, and, and many artists have talked about him. What did he bring to the table? for you guys um i think like what we learned from him was like we did have to kind of like really know what we wanted because you know he's so like he's been he's such a like a veteran you know like he's like been in the game so long and he knows exactly what he wants to achieve and i think like for us we we were kind of riding with him at a time we were like i don't know (laughs) yeah but like um, we learned so much like through his process and and took a lot of it and put it into other stuff as well and mm. I think he's gonna come tonight, mm. come to the show and hang out maybe we'll see <laughs> see if he, <laughs> did he see if he, if he can get out of the studio quick enough <laughs> did did he make an appearance like a you know kind of like those you know uh, uncredited appearances <laughs> um, not not on this one but there's a bunch of stuff that's lying around that we we should attend to I think. <laughs> okay <laughs> sure this whole album obviously you, you just said you know very much a reflection of what, what you went through mm. uh you know, professionally and how it affected you individually you know caleb had his mental issues uh dealing with this situation you as well i think it yeah. would affect anybody i think we're right? always going through mental issues <laughs> i think it's just a part of, it goes hand in hand with being like a a songwriter i think like you you have to wear your heart on your sleeve all the time and sometimes you know like that makes you very vulnerable to there's no there's getting it there's no template to being a songwriter ever as well so you like what am i meant to be really doing all yeah. the time you know so there's no like you really have to have like in other jobs where you like you go to university and they teach you basically how to do your exact job that you have to do mm. this one is just like you make it up so you've got to like 
it's a lot of trial and error and sometimes it, it feels it can feel like you're not doing it right or you feel like you're not on the right track or where you want to be and like it's really strange in those times of displacement and I think like there was a lot of moments like that writing this album and and like in between labels and stuff and and it's, un- it's unsettling and, and like it's unstable and I think like everything about this job is pretty unstable and that's why it's so good that we have each other because like that is our stability and like we, we make sure that we surround ourselves with like people that are either legitimately our family or feel like our family and um, support networks are like that's what sustains you. Right. Do you feel like you're at a point where you're just like forget everybody else, we're just us, and we're just gonna do this, and this is, take it or leave it? Do you have this attitude now? I don't think it's, I I don't think it's ex- like a forget everybody else, but it is more like a- um, Remember yourself a little bit more? It is like, this is like how I wanna do this now, and we understand that more, which we just like, we hadn't figured that out yet. We were kind of still just going, is this how you do it? Mm, I think- Is this how we meant to do it? For, but, for us, for a long time, we were looking out for the answers when we should have been looking in and then like when we did like become independent (laughs) Um, we did have to look in to ourselves a lot more and like I think that even though there were times where it was like incredibly stressful and there were times where like oh my god are we are we still going to be able to do this like are we still going to be able to make music and people listen and stuff and um it it was, I think, totally necessary for for us to, to get to where we are and have this album, you know? Like, we wouldn't have made this album without all those experiences. Yeah. It's an amazing album. Thank you. Really happy that you guys are back and uh, look forward to the we show. We are tonight. happy yeah. to be back. It's going to be a fun show. Yeah. yeah. San Francisco loves you guys. We love it here, too. Yeah. I'm uh, excited for tonight. I cool. think I'd live here if it wasn't... So expensive. So expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Hell. You could crash in my place. <laughs> okay. Done deal. Generous. Thank you. Uh, good to see you guys. All right. Thanks for coming. Awesome. It is uh, Broods. Don't feed the pop monster. Their latest album. You're watching B-Sides on air. <laughs>